do is just share very briefly some thoughts about um, what we've been thinking about in terms of the story of Jesus. In case you haven't realised, it's been the story as in Luke's Gospel. Um, that's where the three readings came from. And there's this, in, this amazing story of, of, uh, of the... Of, Wow, not just the birth of Jesus, but all that happened around the birth of Jesus. Um, For those of you who are visiting us tonight, over the last few Sundays, we've been thinking about um, angels, what they came and what they said, the message that they brought. And the angels particularly want to think about the message they brought to those shepherds. I don't know about you, but I I really like that little encounter that's recorded in, in Luke's Gospel. You know, can you imagine what it would have been like um, as a shepherd out in the fields in the darkness of night, suddenly these bright angels appearing and speaking about this, cu- this birth of a baby. And as they, um, as they spoke, and as they spoke to those shepherds, there's a few things that, that I kind of want to draw out for us to think about this, this evening. The, the first is this. This was personal. It was really personal. I don't know about you, but if someone comes up and stands right in front of you and says, hey, I've got a message for you, you kind of go, oh, okay, and you pay attention. It's personal. And for those shepherds, this announcement was very personal. In the little video clip, the shepherd says, God chose me. It was personal. He was chosen to be a witness to the birth of of the baby Jesus. He was chosen to go and see and observe. And not just that, he was then chosen to go and tell others about all that he'd seen and heard. They were in no doubt. The angel says, I bring to you good news. Today for you in the city of David, a baby has been born. It's for you. That was the message to the shepherds. I don't know about you, but this message was also pretty profound. It wasn't just personal. It was really profound. It was deep. It was life-changing. The message was that this baby, this little baby, was going to be the Saviour, the Christ, the Lord. And all of these titles had huge meaning for, for these shepherds, for anyone at that time. They had been waiting for and anticipating the coming of a saviour. They'd been waiting for it, looking for it. They talked about it. These shepherds were around Bethlehem. They knew the prophecy probably about the fact that the baby would be born in Bethlehem. So this, they were anticipating this coming of this, um, this significant figure who would be their saviour, their messiah, their anointed one who would be their Lord, their God. Some deep claims here. And for those shepherds, when those angels appeared before them, it must have driven home to them the importance of this child. This was not just another baby. This was not just another potential leader. This was someone special. This was someone really important. But it was also a very powerful message that speaks about peace. In many ways, their life then was not that much different to the world today. We may think it's miles different, but in many ways, it's not. They they had problems with the government. They've been taught, being told what to do and where to go and where to be. Does it sound familiar? They, they, they were facing economic hardship all, all the way. The Romans were taxing them rotten. The, the Jewish authorities were, were at it as well. So everyone was struggling. Life was not easy. You know, and, and anyway, then, they, then the blooming government makes you go. And can you imagine that? A 70-mile journey by foot, walking, well, possibly on a donkey, 70 miles, pregnant. Can you imagine what that would have been like? You know, uh, these, these guys were, 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 was not an easy situation. The shepherds were, con- were kind of the lowest of the low. They were a bit socially outcast. They, they got by. 
they looked after sheep, but life was stressful, anxious. I mean, can you imagine what it would have been like as your job as a shepherd? Your job was to guard the flock at night in the countryside. I don't know about you, but I've watched a few TV programs about what it's like to live in the countryside. I'm not doing it. It's far too dangerous. Do you know what? I even know some people that live in the countryside, and I wouldn't do it. Uh, do you know, you, you can't, you, if you walk out the front door at night, there's no street lights. You can't see where you're going. You could fall into a ditch just like that. There's all sorts of wild animals that make all sorts of strange noises. And that's before they even get close to you. And if your job was to guard the sheep, then you had to be the big strong person that was going to get between the sheep and that ferocious animal that might come and eat them. Stressful job. And there's this announcement about peace on earth. They were living in an occupied nation. Peace on earth? It's going to take a lot to do that. That would take some doing. This, this is not some easy task. This is going to require something profound, something powerful, something strong, someone strong. I don't know what you like best about Christmas. I'm not going to ask you. Alan asked everyone this morning. Some of the comments were brilliant. Some of them were not quite how I would express things. And there was one lad this morning who was asked, what's, what's best or what do you like most about Christmas? And he says, presents. Yeah? I want to change that word slightly and say the best thing about Christmas is presence, i.e. the presence of God. Jesus came to be Emmanuel, God with us. That's the promise, that's the message that was given to those shepherds. That this baby was God come down. Now I don't know what you're planning to do for Christmas. I'm looking around the room and I'm thinking some of you are probably planning a feast. Some of you are anticipating an early rise. Yeah? Yeah, Koki's assured me she's going to be wide awake, jumping over her parents at 6 a.m. Is that right, Koki? <laughs> she's not so sure. Maybe you're looking forward to sharing a few gifts. Maybe you're anticipating a gift. Maybe, maybe you've heard a little whisper of what someone might be buying you for Christmas. And you can't wait, a bit like Alan was talking this morning about the gift that he remembers so vividly from his childhood. Maybe you're anticipating something special. Maybe you just haven't got a clue and you just can't wait to see what someone's going to give you, if anything. Maybe you're looking at Christmas and you're thinking, I'll be glad when we get to Boxing Day and it's behind me. Yeah? Yeah? There are all sorts of different pressures and stresses, but the message of Christmas is wrapped up in a baby who is called the Prince of Peace. I want us to think just a little bit about this gift of peace because it's personal for you and for me. You see, this, this whole idea of peace and goodwill towards men, it's a wonderful theme, it's a wonderful idea. But do you know what? We need to wrestle with this and understand what does it mean for me personally. And, and the honest truth is, is we each have to find peace for ourselves before we can build peace in our community or in our world. And if I haven't found peace for myself, then what am I carrying into the world around me? But this message is profound, it's deep, because there are claims here about Jesus that we have to confront and face up to. He claims to be Christ, the Messiah, the Son of God. God himself come down to earth. That's a huge claim that we need to wrestle with. 
We don't just want to think about a tiny baby stuck into a manger. But who is this child? In the little videos, it come out at the end, didn't it? But he's not just a child, but he's our redeemer. He's the one who came to save me. You see, Christmas is so significant because Christmas leads us to Easter. And Christmas points, we, we, we say this child has come for a reason, which was to die for our sins, to make peace for us. And that's the powerful part. That this message can change our lives. It can transform us. I saw a little clip, uh, one, what they call them on social media, memes? I don't know. The, the little, you know the little thing? Oh, I saw it on social media. And it said something like this. I don't know if I'm getting quote this exactly right. But it said something like this. Before you can receive peace from God, you need to have peace with God. Before you can receive peace from God, you need to have peace with God. It's a bit like families. Um, you know, you know one, of the, one of the fun things about Christmas is seeing all the family, isn't it? Who's looking forward to seeing all of your family? <laughs> all of them, yeah, invading and taking over. What about the ones you're not quite so sure about? You know, what about that one that's a bit the awkward one, yeah? Do we all have one, don't we? Most of us do. Some of you are not looking at me a bit strange. We all have one that's a bit odd. Yeah? Yeah? Maybe if they live far enough away, they don't visit at Christmas, but you get the phone call or you get the, or you voice, the, the picture thing on the computer. What's it called? FaceTime. FaceTime, that's the one. Thank you. You see, if I've fallen out with someone, I'm not going to get a gift from them, am I? Do you, do you, see, where I'm, do you see where I'm going? You see, if I'm not talking to you, why would you give me a gift? If I don't want to know you, why would you give me a gift? In fact, if you haven't got a clue who I am, you wouldn't give me a gift, would you? And it's the same with this idea of peace, because we all want peace. We all want to have this wonderful touch from God. We, always, we all want God to bless us and make our lives good and nice and helpful. We want peace and goodwill and joy and blessing and all that. But do we know this God? Do we talk to this God? Do we listen? Do we have a conversation with this God? Because if I don't talk to him, if I'm not on talking terms with him, why, can I, why should I expect anything from this God? And it's not the fact that he's unwilling to give us a gift. It's normally the fact that I'm standing with my back towards him. And one thing I've learned, if you want to receive anything, you have to take it. Which means you have to face the person who's giving it to you and receive it. We're told in the New Testament that Jesus came to die on a cross. And as he did this, he makes peace through his blood. He makes peace through his blood shed on the cross. You can read about that in Colossians chapter 1. That Jesus comes to make peace for us to the sacrifice of his blood on the cross. He did something amazing for us. He reconciles us to God. Now, I don't know about you, but I have to be really careful now about what I say because my mum is listening. All right? Okay, now, um, parents know this about their kids, don't they? They're not always good. Yeah? So I've got to be really careful because my mum knows things that you don't need to know. I already know. I've already caught her telling other people. Yeah. But the point is this. All of us, every single one of us, at some point in our lives, has messed up and gone wrong. Done something stupid or silly. And now let me tell you something about Christmas. There is a fantasy about Christmas. I won't go so strong as to call it a lie but a fantasy. That if you're good enough, you'll get a present. There is a fantasy about that. Yeah? My Bible tells me 
God knows I'm not good enough and he will still gift me peace. Isn't that good? He knows I'm not good enough and he will still gift me peace. And so in Colossians it goes on to say, so let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts. That's in chapter 3. Let the peace of Christ rule. You see, it's personal. When, when I, when I realise that Christ has done this for me, I have to do something about it. It is just like that present, that gift you're going to get on Christmas morning. And it doesn't matter where it is, whether someone brings it into your house, whether someone's already put it under the Christmas tree, whether it's stuffed into a cupboard, someone's going to pick it up and give it to you and you are going to have to receive it. And the way you receive it is you hold your hands out, you take it, and if you're good and you've been raised properly, you say... Thank you. Don't we? Yeah? And we say thank you. We receive it. It's the same with Christ. We can know about this peace with God. We can hear about this peace with God. We can sing all the carols. We can listen to videos. We can research it, understand it, all the rest of it. But we have to take it and let the peace of Christ rule in our hearts. We have to take it in. We have to let him be who he claims to be, which is God, Saviour, Messiah. Jesus said this, he said, Peace I leave with you, and my peace I give you. Now, I don't know about you, but there's a lot of stress around at the moment. I've been trying to just not take too much on board. I don't know about you, but... Um, how we behave should I get too close to you do I need to stay three meters away from you do I need to wear a face mask do I is it safe to go out there's a lot of fear and anxiety around us there's also a lot of pressure economically things are not good Maybe people haven't done as well this year as they like. Prices are going prices are going up. Have you been in the supermarket recently? Prices are going up. Everything's getting more expensive. And there's a there's a there's an anxiety that can come in. How am I going to cope? How am I going to get by? There is something that is on offer to us in the Christmas story that goes totally counter to all of the anxiety and the pressure of life around us. It's very straightforward and simple in one sense, but very profound and deep in another. And it's simply this. Christ came to reconcile us to God. That's the purpose of why he came, to give us peace with God. When we have peace with God, we do not need to worry or be anxious because we will have a heavenly Father who will watch out for us and care for us. In John's Gospel, when Jesus said, I give my peace, I leave you my, it talks exactly about that. Don't be anxious. Don't be worried. My peace I'm giving to you. How do we receive this peace? By his presence in our lives. It's the greatest gift you can ever receive. The presence of God in your heart and in your life. That every day you can live knowing God is with me Emmanuel God with us it's an amazing truth an incredible reality that can transform your life and when you know you live every day with Jesus you never have to worry because he will always be there you can always turn to him you can always rely on him and he promises 
that he will never leave you and he will never forsake you. So for me, Christmas is about the presence of Jesus, not the gifts we get from each other. For me, that's the real meaning. And I want to encourage all of us. Is that our experience? Maybe you're thinking, oh, I'm not so sure, Jeff. It might be all right for you, but I'm not sure how it works for me. One of the things I can tell you is I've lived long enough and I've lived through enough in my life that I can kind of not quite, not quite have the same experience as, as some people. But I, I read my Bible and it talks about I've learned what it means to survive in, in plenty and with little. And part of me can look back over my life and say, do you know what? I've had times when I didn't have any money and we got by and God looked after us. And the times when we've been blessed and God's been with us and looked after us. Do you know what? I can look back through my life and say, uh, the, over decades now, as some of you can too, I've looked back over decades and I go, you know, Jesus was always with me. He's never let me down. It gives me the confidence to face each day, knowing that he will always be with me. He gives you a peace, no matter what the storm is around you. If you don't know that, then I just want to say, that's an amazing gift you can have this Christmas. If you want to know more about that, talk to Alan. Yeah, the guy on the front row there. He, he, he will happily chat with you, pray with you, or come talk to me. Or someone else in the room. But I also want to talk to us, those of us who are believers. I want to say to you, please, 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 this Christmas, make it about his presence, not the presence under the tree. Let's remember to celebrate Jesus, to delight in Jesus, to live with Jesus. <coughs> it's the most important thing we can do. It's the most important gift that he has given us, that he is God with us. Let's pray. Father God, I thank you for the wonderful reality of Christmas, that it speaks about that time when Jesus came into this world, where God broke into this world. We thank you for the picture of that physical reality of you with us, that we can now know as a spiritual reality, you with us each and every day. We thank you for your presence. <laughs> thank you for the peace that you bring into us into our lives may we know your peace may we know your favour this night this Christmas and on into the new year in Jesus name we pray Amen.